let's finish up our discussion on quantum numbers. We've already talked about the principal quantum number, which is the size of the electron cloud, and it's also the energy level of the electron. And we've talked about the angular momentum and magnetic quantum numbers, which describe the shape of the electron cloud and also the direction of the electron cloud. The last quantum number that we need to learn about is called the spin quantum number. The spin quantum number is abbreviated M subscript S. So we call this M sub S. And this quantum number describes the direction of the electron's spin on its own axis. So for this um, discussion, we can really kind of think of the electron like a planet like Earth, and it has an axis, and that electron is rotating or spinning on its own axis. Some of the electrons are spinning clockwise, and other electrons are spinning counterclockwise on their own axis, so that means that we have two possible directions for the spin. We have clockwise spin and counterclockwise spin. And because we have two directions of spin, that means we have two values of the spin quantum number. We call those values plus one half and minus one half. And to be clear, chemists do not assign a direction of spin to a particular value. So we don't say, oh, this is the clockwise spin and this is the counterclockwise spin or vice versa. We just say, we know that some of them are spinning one way and some of them are spinning one the other way and there's two possible directions, which means there's two possible values. That's really all that there is to say about the spin quantum number. So let's look at a few examples. I have eight examples of assigning quantum numbers to electrons. Before we get into our examples, I've got to make one thing very clear. In any given atom, no two electrons can have the same quantum number, the same set of quantum numbers. So this means that every single electron in an atom needs to have its own unique set of quantum numbers. And what this means in terms of like the actual electrons themselves is that in any atom, no two electrons are in the same space doing the same thing. They're all unique in terms of where they're located and what direction they're spinning. So with this in mind, and with all of these um, values in mind, let's start assigning some quantum numbers. So our first question we're going to look at, what are the possible values of L when N equals 5? So remember that the possible values of L for an electron start at 0, and they go up incrementally all the way to N minus 1. In this case, N minus 1 is 4. So the maximum value of L is 4. So this particular electron, an N equals 5 electron, has five different possible values of L. And if we want to think about this in terms of what does that mean, L is describing the shape of the electron cloud. So an electron in the N equals 5 level has five different shapes of electron clouds that it could occupy. Next question is pretty similar. What are the possible values of m sub l when n equals 5? Remember that m sub l, the values of m sub l, rely on the values of l. So in order for us to answer this question, we have to first figure out the possible values of l. l starts at 0, and it works its way all the way up to n minus 1. In this case, n minus 1 is 2. Once we get our possible values of L, we're now ready to look at the possible values of M sub L. M sub L starts at zero, and it goes all the way up through L, but remember plus and minus is a factor. So when L equals zero, the possible values of M sub L are just zero. When L equals one, the possible values of M sub L are zero, minus 1, and plus 1. And when L equals 2, the possible values of M sub L are 0, minus 1, plus 1, minus 2, and plus 2. 
We don't know with the n equals 3 electron, electron, we don't know which L it has taken. But regardless of all the possible values of, of L, these are the possible values of M sub L. If we know that the value of L is 1, then that restricts the possible values of M sub L. But in this case, we have no idea what the value of L is, which means that we can't put any restrictions on M sub L. Let's look at another example. What is the maximum number of electrons that can have n equals 1 and m sub s plus 1 half? So this type of question is um, uh, working on the, the concept that no two electrons can have the exact same set of quantum numbers. So what we're trying to figure out is how many unique set of quantum numbers can we come up with that has n equals 1 and m sub s equal to plus 1 half? When n equals 1, the only possible value of L is 0. And when L equals 0, the only possible value of M sub L equals 0. For any M sub L, we have two possible values of M sub S, 1 half and minus 1 half. So this problem is asking how many electrons can have n equals 1 and m sub s equals 1 half, it looks like we can only come up with one unique set of quantum numbers with n equals 1 and m sub s equal to 1 half. So we can only have one electron with those particular quantum numbers. This is a similar question. How many electrons can exist in the n equals 1 level? Well, this is a question of asking how many unique sets of quantum numbers can we come up with when n is equal to 1. So we could have n equals 1. When n equals 1, l can only be 0. When n equals 1 and l equals 0, m sub l can only be 0. And m sub s can be either plus 1 half or m sub s could be minus 1 half which means we can actually come up with two unique sets of quantum numbers for an electron in the n equals 1 level. This means that we can have two electrons in this level. We can have two unique set of quantum numbers which corresponds to two electrons. Every unique set of quantum numbers equates to one electron.